In this video, I'm going to show the Planet Labs web-based explorer that is able to visualize their recorded satellite imagery. I have been using the Planet Labs Explorer for agriculture-related research projects as a remote sensing reference to get the state of the broad acre fields at different times in the season. So you're able to see how the crops are growing and their current level. I live in Denmark and if I want to zoom in I can choose to left click on the area. Uh, with the two um, more you can choose to select an area and what the tool will provide you here is it will provide you with the satellites data that has been recorded so you can actually choose the sources that you want um, and I tend to select these um, because what I'm basically looking for when I when I use these tools is images of an area without cloud cover. And this is an easy way to visualize that. So I can get the different satellite types they provide, and they also actually have the Sentinel-2 and the Landsat-8 uh, from NASA and ESA respectively. Um, but what's interesting here is um, that you can actually have images like this one where, where there's completely cloud color one day and, and the next I have a very nice one of, of the same area. So this is nice to zoom into an area where we kind of know where, what we want, um, but there is something that is missing here and, and, and I kind of find out it was an easier way to do. And that was actually to use the land um, parcel identification system um, to actually use that instead of just marking the area. Here in Denmark, uh, it's uh, placed here. So they haven't provided the one from 2018, but the borders of the fields tend to be the same. So the one from 2017, you can kind of download. And what I do is if I want to look at um, a specific area here, uh, like here again, I basically just go in and, yeah, extract the, the shape file and load it into Googie's, um, I just have to put that one on top. Oh, always on top. Like this. Anyway, um, if I load it in, you will be able to see all the fields here. And if I change it a bit, so we have no brush and we have a completely dark color for the boundaries, you'll be able to see all the fields um, in an area. So say I would like to look at the fields in this area, I would be able to select them like that. Oh, let's try to make it a bit smaller. So one of the things you need to know is that when you want to have these quick views from Planet Labs that I just showed, the demand is that the area is not too big. Um, so I'm not completely sure what the boundaries are, but, but if we do something like this, I tend to say, okay, save as. And I select from the formats option, I select the GeoJSON and I change the, the reference format to the default one because this is the one that Planet Labs is able to read. And then I kind of, yeah, select that folder for it and just call it, let's say, field one, two, three, four. So this is just a name for it. Um, and what you need to remember to press is save only selected futures because else it will try to save all of the futures and, and then you kind of will miss the, the option you get by this. So then I can press OK. 
And now I can go back into the Plan Labs tool and say open and I can kind of select, as you see here, the Duke JSON file that I've just uh, loaded in. They actually have a, both the option for shape files and XML and and a number of other options, but I kind of like the GeoJSON format for, for this because it's so easy to actually read by, uh, by hand. But again, now you have here the image for uh, the recorded images for each of the fields. And what you actually can see for some of the fields here is you can actually see the seed and direction of uh, how the field has been treated and um, and the current state. And I think this is a, a much easier way to zoom through the images. Uh, so you still have images like this one where there's a cloud cover, but I'm able to find the interesting scans like this one. I say, okay, mm, I would like to look into a bit more into this one. So I would choose to take the raw image here. And I can actually order the items. And in this case, uh, just type in my name. Yep. Um, and as you see, I just have a try right now. Um, but it's just to show how it works. And what I basically want was all of these and I can place an order in this system. So what will basically happen is that it will process my order and after some time I can actually download the image and get all of that area into cookies. So it's a way for me to actually use the land pass identification system to see, okay, I want to look at this field, this field, this field, and this field, and some of the others, and find the dates where I can actually find cloud-free images from the, uh, the Planet Labs repository, and thereby use that to our selection. So after downloading and extracting the data uh, from the Planet Labs server, I have the following three folders. Each folder contains an image created by the PlanetScope satellite. To load the data into cookies, I simply open cookies and drag each of the different satellite images into my current open program. As you will note, the three images covers different parts of the area where the fields are placed. The UDM GeoTiffs represents the cloud cover that Plant Labs thinks are present in the imagery. Before I forget, there is actually an unofficial Plant Labs plugin for Kugis that you could try to install and see if it works. I've not tried it myself, but that's actually another option for doing something similar. Now we can reload the fields that we have chosen for this project and see how it fits onto the layers that we have loaded into Kugis. Now we have both the field and the satellite imagery from the Plan Labs satellite inside Kugus, where we can do further processing and calibrate the colors of the rasters if we want to, for example. This will not be covered by this guide, so play around with it and I hope you enjoy this video.